Hello and welcome to another screencast in which I demonstrate uh, basic uh, use of, 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 of some useful software. This time Audacity, which is a free audio editor. Um, it's used uh, by podcasters, by smaller radio stations. Um, because it's free, you can just install it on your machines at home. Really, really useful. I use it a lot myself. And if you've done any video editing before in something like Premiere Pro or Final Cut uh, or iMovie, it will look quite familiar because you're dealing with clips, you're moving them around, you've got a timeline, but it's so much simpler because you're only dealing with audio, you don't have pictures. Um, so, to edit audio, first you need your audio. Um, I'm going to use a clip supplied by Audi Motorsport um, here. Um, it's for use by journalists, um, obviously to make broadcast, uh, but since you're training to be journalists, I hope they'll feel that that's more or less in the spirit of, of why they issued it. And if you're Audi and you're watching this, please don't sue me. So let's bring it in. Um, and you just drag it and it's there, boom. Uh, in stereo, which is why there's two tracks, and uh, that jaggedy stuff is the waveform. Um, and uh, 51 seconds long, and uh, let's just play a bit of it. You have play controls here, very, very familiar. You'll recognize the icons immediately. They're round on a PC, but in a lot of the respects, I'm on my Mac here, but it's, it's no different. Um, check it's back to the beginning and just hit play. I've been waiting on this since 1985. I've had three cracks at the World Championship in casting. I finished third at Le Mans, funnily enough, uh, behind Andrea Gilardi and Michael Schumacher. And that one hurt uh, because it was one that was close, but no cigar. Um, so, you, you might have heard at this point in the waveform, uh, I think he said the word carting, it was a bit louder, that's why it's bigger, obviously. Um, you can zoom in, um, there are magnifying glass buttons here for zooming in, and you can see how it becomes you know, much more detailed as you, as you do. It's, yeah, that's quite fascinating if you're into this sort of thing. Um, See how it, how it's now really does look like something that you you, you might associate with with with, with a waveform that's very compressed before. Uh, you can zoom out again, but this really really useful button will just change your zoom level so that the whole thing fits on screen like that. And this one here, if you've got a bit selected, that will fill the screen with the bit you had selected. Um, so that's how you zoom in and out. Um, you've also seen playback controls. Um, the other controls really that will be most useful to you are these five here. Cut, copy and paste, very familiar from word processors, they do exactly what you'd, you'd think when you've got some selected, you cut it and put it on the clipboard so you could paste it somewhere else if you wanted to, uh, copy it um, and, and, and paste. These two are very much audio only ones, you won't find them in a word processor. Um, this one that looks like two bars squashing a waveform. Um, will trim your clip so that all that's left is the stuff you selected, like that. And um, so, if, say for example, you took four takes to do something, and you had the audio with the four takes, and just select the one that works and, and, and zap the other ones like that. Um, this has exactly the opposite effect. The one that looks like a bar pushing aside two waveforms that just puts in silence to replace it, like that. Uh, it's a good way of, 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 of cutting and editing. Uh, and you've got an undo in the menu uh, and, and an undo there. So, um, what do you, can you actually do with all this stuff? Well, one thing you can do is tidy up audio. This is fairly clean. Um, you know, it's been issued by the PR uh, arm of a very, very big company to celebrate the driver winning the World Championship. So, you know, they're not going to put rubbish out. Bart McNish does say um in a couple of places, and if you can, then you want to remove things like that. Um, <laughs> as, as you would have there. Sometimes you can overdo it, and so the voice then becomes choppy because there's not enough silence left. You get the words too close together. But, you know, you, you can improve something an awful lot just by taking out the little verbal mannerisms. Uh, and, and the ticks and the ums and the ahs. So let's uh, just zoom this in a bit so you can see the waveforms better and play it. I think it's here where he goes um, but the next one is him saying the word but. So we've got to keep that. I'll just play it for you. Play lucky, uh, but. Play lucky, uh, but. 
The reason I keep leaning in incidentally is uh, I'm fairly sure the audio from the machine has only been picked up by this microphone, so um, you need to be able to hear it clearly. Now there are various ways that we could do for this um. Uh, let's just zoom in, so that is just the um, but let's go out a bit so it's more clear. Right, okay. Um, now I'm getting self-conscious about every time I say um. This tool here, the envelope tool, can be used to put gentle changes to the whole volume level of, 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 of your clip. It allows you, allows you to put marker points in and create curves using those marker points. It's not so good for this, but if you overall have something where the sound level gets higher and higher as it goes along, or, or an airliner goes over or something like that, you can quite subtly put in uh, changes of volumes that way. Now I've got to undo all that, which always takes longer than you expect in this tool. Whoops, gone too far. Right. Um, so that's one thing you can do. Obviously, uh, we can use this, and that's done it. You know, that's absolutely done it. It's left blank space, which we might or might not want. Um, we'll see. Not very lucky, but. Personally, I feel it's quite a lot of space that was. Not very lucky, but so if you feel that was too much space, then um, your alternative is just to cut it because that closes the clip up. Not very lucky, but personally, I feel and I think that worked better. Proud of what we did. Um, lost it. Did it? Did it jump? I think we had a oh. out the blocks. Fighting at uh, Silverstone. I think we had a really good run. And okay, I've lost where we were. Here, we came out the blocks. Oh well. Um, so you know that's 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 really it for working within one clip. You you're not going to need to do much more than that. What you might find you want to do, obviously, or almost certainly will find you want to do, is put more than one clip in and arrange them in order. Now you have the option of just pasting stuff at the end or, or, or splitting it and pasting it in the middle. Um, but if you're working with multiple clips, actually the best thing to do is create a timeline. So I'm now going to bring in some music. Um, whoops. Um, it's currently half one, so I hope I didn't wake the neighbours up. Um, don't worry about that bit. Okay, so I have a very, very short bit of music. Um, and at the moment, it would um, overwrite the start of McNish speaking. So clearly I want to move McNish's voice over. And to do that, I use this tool here with the double-headed arrow. When you pick that, it's called the time shift tool, you can move audio around like that. And now they're nose to tail. The relative volume levels are different, so um, I kind of really want to move that, that down. Ooh, don't want to do that, that really went wrong. Um, I've got to bear that in mind when I play it back, at least because of the neighbours, so let's just turn that down um, and see what we get. I've been waiting on this since 1985. Right. Um, and yeah, you can put in multiple clips in and just build a timeline. When you um, feel that, that, that it's getting too much, you can merge clips together. Um, but, you know, you just import all of them, move them across as you want, make sure that the spaces are sufficient that you don't get really choppy voices. And I'll give you an example of what I mean by a, a, a choppy voice. Let's take this bit, um, let's see what he says. And then in Formula One, there was. Um, if I thought that space was too long and cut it out a bit too brutally, see the. Hopefully you can hear that. Just that space there is is, is now too short, and you, you you can get that when you edit. You just take all the spaces out, and you just don't have enough left. Um, so the next thing I want to do is um, use an effect on here to fade it in and out because. It's, it's quite a brutal cut off. This is a, a, a looping piece of music, so uh, it's intended to just rip, rip, repeat. Um, so I am going to just select a chunk of it 
and go into a menu that's off the top here that says effects loads of them um, this is partly a result of my installation here I don't think you'll necessarily have all of them but you will have fade in and fade out fade out just brings that down to a gentle nothingness and um, if I use fade in at the other end then that should produce a, a much easier on the ear effects and we have to turn this up a little bit Cool. So that that that's worked. Um, and really, armed armed with that, that's enough to assemble um, assemble a broadcast. You can turn down the the the, the volume of the clip a bit, like like that. Um, hopefully, that will have dealt with the noise issue. So now I've got to turn it up so you can hear it. So there for the volume, you can change the balance with left and right. And you do have some options here for combining tracks into stereo. But you know, this is not going to be something that you need to do too much, too much expert sound mixing on. Um, one thing I have to warn you about, um, the biggest single cause, the absolute biggest single cause of students sticking their hand up and saying it doesn't work, is because if you um, pause playback, you can't do anything really when it's paused. You can select stuff, but cut doesn't work, and none of this stuff works. And people pause it and forget it's on pause. I lost a whole early take of this after about 15 minutes when I was like, why is this not working? Why is this not working? And I had to start again and I realized it's because it was on pause. Hit stop and then it works. Um, other than that, well, you know, you just got to export it after this. Now what is really, really important on this one is don't don't think that by saving a project or hit, using the word save, you have saved your, your work. I mean, great if you want to come and resume it, but you have not produced something that you will be able to use um, and submit as work. You need to export for that. So export, um, and um, we wait while my system grinds. Um, but, oi, 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 come on. Doesn't matter. Uh, two formats you can really choose between uh, WAVE and um, and MP3. Really, don't vary from those. Og Vorbis is an open source one, uh, possibly the coolest or strangest name of any file format there is. But WAVE and MP3 are, are your two choices. And I'm going to ask you for this project to export in MP3. The quality is slightly lower, but the file sizes are massively smaller. Um, and it will really, really help me with my, with my marking. So, to save, you export MP3, give it a name, um, and um, you probably get a yeah mixed down to two stereo channels and the exported file. Duh, that's fine by me. Um, this stuff is if you want to put in metadata. You know, if you were a musician, you know, track title, album title. For this, you can just skip it. And that can sometimes take a t bit of time, um, but with any luck, um, it should work. I've been waiting on this since night. Yeah, it does. Cool. So, there you go, 14 minutes and 24. I always try and do these shorter, but it never seems to work. Um, Yay, audacity. <laughs>